events, starting with the COVID-19 uh, issue, and that was two, three years. Uh, and more recently, for the last one and a half years, we've had the Russia-Ukraine crisis, and this has had a significant impact on the global economy. More recently, uh, we've had the inflation issue that's affecting the global economy, and a lot of central banks, you know, across the world, taking action to raise the benchmark rates. Uh, of course, the most significant being the Fed rates in the United States uh, that has affected uh, currency markets uh, across the world. And so that's the overall picture. Um, when you now come into Kenya, there are a number of areas in which, relatively speaking, and we are speaking relatively, um, the Kenyan economy still shows some amount of resilience. Uh, for example, when you look at the GDP growth numbers that uh, even the IMF is projecting for 2023, Kenya is still north of 5%, uh, higher than the sub-Saharan Africa average, much higher than the global average. Um, inflation still in the single digit range came down from 9 to about 7.9% because of some of the actions taken by the monetary policy uh, committee. And, uh, you know, with the rains and the ongoing agricultural, you know, activity expected to be within, within that range. So there are some good uh, aspects of it. However, um, there are areas where, of course, there is stress and there is difficulty. You see the commodity prices, you know, uh, food prices, fuel prices getting impacted. And therefore, that is the, the overall dynamic. You know, there's a global issue. It's affecting many countries. Kenya is part of that dynamic. There are certain aspects to be optimistic about. But yes, the reality is that it is a challenging environment. Mm -hmm. um, and for me, the key message really is, yes, it's a tough uh, period for the global economy, a tough period for the Kenyan economy. But at the same time, we've been through cycles, you know, and I take um, a lot of encouragement from a client of mine of ours in APSA that I met mm -hmm. yesterday evening who told me, you know, they have been in business since 1973 mm -hmm. and have banked with us since 1973. And he said that we've been through many cycles, we've worked with you through these cycles, and I'm confident, he said he's confident, mm -hmm. that this is one more that we'll get through. Yeah. And that really encouraged me, but, you know, that, okay. that's where we are. And that's interesting. We're talking about cycles. So let's talk about absence cycles um, for a moment. Uh, three years ago, or a little over three years ago, APSA had a different name, different brands, different colors. Take us through that cycle. It's been three years since February 2020, um, you know, when you uh, uh, rebranded. And, and perhaps this is not just of APSA, but banks in general are seen to be elitist, you know, for a certain class of people and not for others. Who is ABSA today and who do you cater to? So you, you got it right. Three years ago, we went through um, one of the biggest brand transitions that this continent of Africa has ever seen. It was done in multiple countries, transitioning from our old brand to the new brand. Um, we have a rich heritage as a company. In Kenya, we opened our first branch in Mombasa in 1916. So we celebrated 100 years in 2016. Um, and through this period, we worked with this country, with our clients in this country, with the stakeholders in this country, through many different periods of our history. Um, and when we got to this point where we transitioned into the new APSA brand, we've carried through a lot of that heritage, but we've turned up over the last three years as an African brand that is passionate about Africa, passionate about Kenya, ready to work with our clients in all the sectors of the economy. And you would have seen some of the work that we've done uh, in SME, for example, mm -hmm. you know, which is a very, very important sector for the economy. We've done a lot of work um, you know, providing financial support, providing training um, to the SME sector. And there's a specific focus in certain areas. So, for example, you know, women SMEs, mm. that's a very specific area that we've worked on, something that I'm personally very passionate about. 
and uh, we've provided training and support in the last six months for about 40 to 50,000 women in Kenya in 10 different counties. And this is still an ongoing process. So it's not just about lending, but it's also support and helping them to work through you know, their requirements for markets, for example, mm -hmm. helping them to network and learn from each other, do business events. And you know, we've done a lot of work in that segment. That's a good, good example. Why the focus on SMEs? Why is that important to you? It's important to us for, for different reasons. The first reason is it's a very important part of the economy, you know, 50% of GDP, 80% of employment in this country is provided by SMEs. But it's also important to us because it's about aspiration. It's about helping, you know, you can do the numbers and say we've done 50,000, 100,000, mm. but at the end of the day, it comes down to one business story one young woman who wants to become better, who wants to grow her business, one young man who has left college who wants to build his own enterprise, and how can we help those people? That's one of the big items. Of course, we're still doing business in the corporate banking area where we've done traditionally, and you know, we have a large corporate bank that is very well represented across the East Africa you know, region, as you know, we have presence in Uganda, in Tanzania, mm. in South Africa, in West Africa. And therefore, we bring that to our corporate clients. <clears throat> and that's another big area that we're working on. We're looking at the youth market. Mm. Um, and you know, there's a, a lot of young people who are coming into the market, either as startups or newly employed mm. into the market. Mm. How can we get them to achieve their dreams? That's another area that we're focusing on. Yeah. Um, Let me talk about, you know, ABSA Bank and, and your performance, you know, at least for the first quarter of this year. A net profit of 4.5 billion shillings. Your total, the value of your total assets is now, you know, you've crossed the half a trillion, uh, you know, shillings mark. Um, and that's impressive for a bank um, such as yours. But I also want to talk about, you know, the other side for customers, um, you know, with the central bank survey talking about one of the sharpest um, increases in loan defaults. So, you know, there's, there's that sort of dichotomy of, of a story of, of banks that are doing well, but also their customers that are struggling. Uh, what, is, what does that tell you about, um, you know, where we are and perhaps where we need to be? I think it's back to what we said earlier about the macroeconomy and, uh, you know, where we are in general, not just in Kenya, but, but across the board. And for us, as, as a banking industry, you know, we are in the business of ensuring that we support our customers. Uh, risk is part of it. Uh, you want your non-performing loans to be, you know, lower, and, and that's always the effort. And if you look at APSA, for example, still in the single digit, um, you know, we, we, we're fairly stringent about how we support our customers through this period. But whenever we have non-performing facilities, mm -hmm. Again, as an organization, we have specific support units within the organization that help customers, whether they are large corporates, SMEs, individuals who are salaried who may be going through difficulty through that period. Um, in fact, this week I met one of the customers that we supported through debt rescheduling in, uh, during the COVID period. You know, they're in the hotel industry, they had major issues, and we rescheduled a lot of their debts during that period. And customers remember that because it means you are there with them through the difficult period. Mm. So overall, the expectation, of course, is that things improve, that NPLs will come down, and we've seen them go through that, through that cycle. But certainly when you look at APSA's numbers, we are much lower than the industry average, and it's something that we watch very carefully. Mm. And, you know, we 